Let's go through your jumpers right now. Okay. Right. Okay, Keith, if you could, um, Keith, if you could lock the door when you leave, please. Don't, don't Keith's leave. just throwing clothes on the floor. Don't. Don't. don't <laughs> he's ransacking your house. Hey, that man was like me.
Kings of Leon from yesterday, Bastille, London Grammar, Jason Derulo, all of that is up there for you. And I repeat, today's live match for Imagine Dragons after 6 o'clock this evening. Podcast. The time is 5.45 p.m. It's time for Newsbeat with Chris Smith. Listen, watch, share. This is BBC Radio 1. Our main story from Newsbeat tonight is all about jobs and the money in your pockets. As new figures show unemployment is down.
while they were away, they'd entrusted him to deal with the bills and the renovation of the house. Now, you mentioned that Anne Berry's son was shot uh, and is now in hospital. And you've been to see him, is that right? I did manage to have a couple of minutes with Alex, who is uh, conscious now. He's off life support, but still being treated for the bullet wound to his leg. And he said essentially that he had to run for his life, had to plead for his life, and was lucky to escape. But of course, he's been through a traumatic ordeal, and he now has to come to terms with the fact that his mother did not survive that attack. Newsbeat. Newsbeat. United Nations investigators say war crimes are being committed by all sides in the conflict in Syria. It comes as fresh fighting breaks out between rebel troops and the government forces there this afternoon. Newsbeat's Hannah Morrison has more. Over the last few weeks, we've heard a lot of criticism of the government in Syria over claims that used chemical weapons. This new report details crimes committed by both sides, including the deliberate bombing of hospitals. It comes as Barack Obama postpones a vote on military action against Syria. When, with modest effort and risk, we can stop children from being gassed to death, I believe we should act. But the US president says he will push for a strike if the Syrian government doesn't hand over its chemical weapons. David Cameron's agreed to meet the mother of a British teenager stabbed to death in Malia. A 19-year-old's been charged with the murder of Terrell Matthews Burton, but the victim's family claim Greek authorities are not keeping them informed of what's going on. <laughs> Still to come on Newsbeat, we talk to Naughty Boy, Enter Shikari and Alt J about how getting their music on adverts, in films and on TV shows can help them make serious money. I still really want to be on The Good Wife and, and Breaking Bad. That'd be pretty good. This is Newsbeat. 330 miles of railway track costing tens of billions of pounds. But will it boost the economy? Critics say the budget for the high-speed 2 railway line, HS2, linking London with the Midlands and Northern England, is already spiralling out of control. Now the government's fighting back to try and win some more support for the plan. He's beats Cat Collins has more from London's Euston Station. Because 13 years from now, HS2 passengers could start or end their journeys here. vital for the UK economy, providing quick links to and from major cities and helping to deal with overcrowding. We're constantly getting the train in the morning, it's quite out of control later because in the mornings and uh, about five o'clock it's just horrendous. Critics say the government's got its figures wrong though, with recent reports suggesting the plan will prove too expensive and not bring the promised economic benefits. Are fighting back with their own report, written by the company behind the project. Perhaps unsurprisingly, they claim HS2 could boost the wider UK economy by £15 billion pounds a year. And there's more to it than just shorter journeys. It says more seats will mean more people can work while travelling. Hi, my name's Dale. I come from Manchester today. Train service is really good. I get a train a lot. Uh, and to be honest, there's so many carriages, and a lot of people respect everyone's on a train anyway. So unless you get some idiots blaring up music or having a go at it, just down the phone, you're alright. On Monday, a senior group of MPs warned HS2 will only benefit London and the southeast of England. But Transport Secretary Patrick McLaughlin denies that, insisting it will make places like Leeds, Birmingham and Manchester stronger. I don't think we need it, to be fair. You can get here in two hours, there's nothing wrong with it. I think they'll um, take more than put more trains and spend a little bit of money to fix the economy. You can rely on it happening around this time every year. Term starts, it gets a bit colder, and Apple launches a new iPhone. But this year, they've shown off two new models. It's a change in strategy for the company, which has been losing out, as more people around the world buy Android smartphones. Newsbeat's technology reporter Jonathan Blake's got more details. One looks the same as the last iPhone. It comes in three metal finishes, silver, gold, and a new space gray. That's gray to the rest.